On July 2, 2011, I set out on a three-week journey to Ghana in Africa. I went to a small rural village called Senchi Ferry. We were a group of 11 people from all over the United States. The youngest was 15, the oldest in his 60s. We came to Ghana as part of a team organized by Global Volunteers, a nonprofit group based in St. Paul, Minnesota, whose mission is to wage peace through service. Some of us helped with construction projects, but most of us taught school children at various small schools throughout the community. I came to teach. Every day from 3 to 4, we head over to the Senshi Ferry Library to tutor the kids. Samuel runs the library, and we often find him reading to a big group of children, holding them wrapped in attention as he expressively tells them stories. The older children sometimes stand and read to the younger ones. On Tuesday, I decided to bring boxes of markers, crayons, and colored construction paper. I had heard that the children rarely get a chance to draw, so it seemed like a good idea. And it was, though a bit chaotic. These kids are hungry for a chance to be creative in any way. Anyways, it was like a domino effect. After explaining the rules, one piece of paper per person and one marker or crayon at a time, and if you want a new color, you have to return the old one. Sounds simple, right? and unrealistic too? Well, first three kids came up to me. Please, madam, may I have a piece of paper? They asked politely. Then they each took one marker or crayon. Soon I was surrounded by a big group of kids. They drew on any surface they could find, eager to show me their work when they were done. They drew houses and animals and bicycles, all carefully labeled. Some tried to copy images from books. All the children wanted to give their artwork to me. Only a couple chose to take theirs home. It was as if they were content with the chance to create. Owning their art seemed irrelevant. They were so proud of what they had done. Eventually, our time together was over and I needed to gather all the materials together. Do you know that every single one of those crayons was returned, neatly replaced in the crayon box? Every single one. Then I went to organize the markers. One by one, the children handed them to me, then scurried out the door. After arranging the markers in their boxes, I realized that one marker was missing, a blue one. Oh well, I thought, it's only one marker. And I packed up and headed back to the guest house with our group. I really thought no more about it. The next day, on Wednesday, I was too tired to go to our afternoon library time. As our group was gathered in a van to go to a bead factory, Angie, one of our volunteers, came up to me. Here, she said, as she handed me something, one of the children gave this to me in the library and asked me to give it to you. It was the one blue marker that had been missing. I was so moved. These children have so little. They live in pretty meager circumstances having very few personal possessions, and yet they have the decency and honesty to return what is not theirs. I can't help but think that this probably would not have happened in the United States. Many of our kids have so much materially and don't seem to value what they have. Everything is disposable and replaceable. Of course, it's not their fault. Their perspective is informed by their experiences and our culture. For me, this one blue marker is a symbol of this experience. Ghana is such a humbling place to be.